there is an episode at the beginning of the, of the story when Jane and all her school friends are suffering from a terrible epidemic of disease and her best friend dies of this terrible disease. So there's a sort of connection there. But I would say that Jane Eyre is a story for all time, for any time, whether, whether people are having a bad time or a good time. It's an eternal story. The story of Jane Eyre is the story of a young woman who starts the story with nothing. Her parents have died, she has no money, she has no prospects in life. She's not beautiful. She's hopeless in all sorts of ways. And, and she makes her way in the world. She reinvents herself. She finds a, a, a way of thinking about herself that, that makes it possible for her to succeed in life and become a great person inside herself. And the wonderful thing about the story is that the man in the story, Rochester, starts exactly the other way around. He starts with everything. He is incredibly handsome, incredibly intelligent. He's very rich. He's got a beautiful house. He has everything the world could possibly give him. And he slowly gets more and more desperate and crazy and poor in spirit. So that he, he as he goes down, Jane comes up and they change places. And the person with nothing becomes the strong person who controls everything. And the person who has everything becomes the person who desperately needs the strong person to help him live his life. And there's a wonderful symmetry about that. Um, and I think for the whole audience, they can recognize themselves. Women can recognize themselves in Jane. Women and men maybe can recognize themselves in Jane. But men can rec recognize themselves in Rochester. And reassess maybe their relationships with women and vice versa. I think it's a fascinating story about gender and about how people can develop through their lives in relationship to members of the opposite, opposite gender. It's also a story about truth and lies, um, about the importance of telling the truth in your life and not having secrets from other people that are going to be corrosive and and damage the relationship you have with other people. Um, and I think that's something that is important for everybody, whoever they are in life, to be able to recognize that the importance of telling the truth both to yourself and to the people who are closest to you. Now, I'm really attracted by the idea of having Jane and Helen played by two act actors um, doubling together. When you, do, when you sing a part like Jane, uh, it's a huge, huge role for a young woman to play. So it seemed to me that it would be great if we could have two Janes so that they could share the, the, the burden of playing such a big role. One of the Janes is always out of the show, sort of just sitting in the dressing room or sitting in the hotel waiting for the other one to, to finish the performance. So I thought it was a really good idea to keep both the actors playing Jane involved in the show at the same time so that the whole company would remain a unified company. And I think the amalgamation of, of Jane and Helen, the two parts, is very, very interesting because Jane uh, and Helen Burns are best friends. So it's a way of the two actresses playing Jane um, supporting each other all the way through the run of the show. And, bringing their relationship together in a way that the audience, I think, will really enjoy. And I think for the two actors, it's going to be very emotional because when they get to the scene where Helen dies at the beginning of the show, of course, they're going to be watching themselves dying. You know, they're going to feel very deeply the death of the other one. And it, that feeling will keep them going all the way through the evening until they finally meet at the very end of the show. I think it will be very spe make, make the performance m much more special for them both.